If cells are the building blocks of life, then proteins are the building blocks of cells. They've got this phenomenally intricate, impressive, beautiful 3D shape to them, and they have hundreds of functions. Uh, for example, all enzymes are proteins, lots and lots of hormones are made of protein, antibodies are proteins, they're crucial in the structure, function, and regulation of all living organisms. So what are we gonna learn about in this lesson? Well, we're gonna look at the structure of an amino acid. Amino acids are what you need to build proteins. We're gonna explain how polypeptides are formed, which are long chains of amino acids, and we'll look at particular type of bonding that you get in proteins, such as ionic, hydrogen, and disulfide bonds. And we're gonna look at the different levels of structure that you get in a protein, specifically looking at hemoglobin and collagen as our examples. Uh, and we're going to look at the, how those proteins, their structure is related to their function. So, amino acids. Proteins are made up of these amino acid molecules, and there are actually 20 different variations uh, of amino acid that you can have, but they've got the same basic structure. They've all got an amino group and an H2 group, and they've all got a carboxylic acid group on the other side of the molecule. Okay, they've all got a simple hydrogen coming off the bottom, but it's that R group which is where you get the variation. Some R groups are very, very simple, as you can see from some of these diagrams, and some of them are much more complicated. So the sequence and combination of different amino acids is actually then gonna determine the overall 3D structure of the final protein. And this is because each of those R groups have slightly different properties, which is gonna cause different bonds to form with other R groups and other amino acids, and that causes the protein to fold up in a particular way, and that gives it its particular function. So how do we join these amino acids together? Well, we're gonna do a condensation reaction. Okay, we've seen condensation reactions before in lipids and carbohydrates. And again, we're gonna use a condensation reaction where you remove water to join two things together. I'm gonna to form a new bond, which is called a peptide bond. And when you join two amino acids together with a peptide bond, you get a dipeptide. And if we continue doing that, we're gonna end up with a polypeptide. Lots of amino acids joined together forms a polypeptide. Now, once you form this polypeptide, which can be hundreds of amino acids long, it then gets folded up into our 3D structure. And the way we describe that is in four stages. We look at the primary, the secondary, the tertiary, and the quaternary structure of a protein. The primary structure is literally just the order, the sequence of amino acids, what order those amino acids come in. The secondary structure is then when those start folding slightly, they can fold into two uh, shapes at this point, an alpha helix or a beta pleated sheet. Now, both of these are formed using hydrogen bonds. Okay, so secondary structure is about alpha helices and beta pleated sheets using hydrogen bonds. Tertiary structure is where it gets more interesting. This is where it starts forming more complex 3D structures. And these are controlled by hydrogen bonds again, ionic bonds, and disulfide bonds. And then quaternary structures where you say, actually, we've got a whole polypeptide folded up here, and here's another polypeptide, and we're gonna join those together. So you've got more than one polypeptide chain joined together. So let's look a little bit more at these bonds that you can have again. Hydrogen bonds, they are quite weak, um, and they are formed between a, the slightly positive charge from hydrogen atoms and the tiny negative charges on oxygen atoms. Disulfide bonds are covalent bonds. They are, are quite strong, and they're formed between two cysteine amino acids. The amino acid cysteine has got sulfur in it, and it can form these disulfide bonds. And ionic bonds, also known as salt bridges, these are formed between positive and negative amino acid side chains. Now these bonds are sensitive to changes in temperature and pH. They can break and cause the protein to lose this complex 3D shape which determines its function. And when that happens, we say it has become denatured. Now there's two examples of proteins we're gonna look at. We're gonna look at hemoglobin and we're gonna look at collagen. So first of all, hemoglobin. Now this is an example of a globular protein. It has four polypeptide chains joined together by disulfide bonds. So we say that this protein has quaternary structure because of these four 
individual chains. Each chain is then arranged around something called a heme group, which contains an iron molecule combined with the oxygen. You'll be familiar with hemoglobin in red blood cells as this molecule which binds to oxygen to help carry oxygen around the body. And it does that because of this iron molecule, which we call a prosthetic group, because it's not part of an amino acid. Collagen is very different. You can see even just from the diagram, it's a fibrous protein, not globular, it's a fibrous protein. It doesn't have very much uh, tertiary structure. There's not much complex 3D folding going on here, okay? They're made of long parallel polypeptide chains joined by crosslinks to form these fibers. And these collagen fibers are extremely strong and they're used to help form bones, ligaments, tendons, and skin. Collagen is this triple helix, it's made of three alpha chains and they're held together by hydrogen bonds. These then form fibrils and then those are joined together further to form collagen fibers and it gives a really high tensile strength.